And then, when I was on my way home, I realized, how come I don't love God? I'm a Catholic. I'm a religious Catholic. I go to Mass every Sunday. I say the rosary. My family, my whole family are close religious Catholic. But now that I'm dying, the only time I realize, I say, I love you, Jesus, by mouth, not from the heart. Lord, I cried. I went to the garden. I was alone. And I shouted, Lord, help me. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven with you. Help me, please, please. And I heard a voice. Call a pastor. What, Lord? You know I'm a Catholic. Why a pastor? He did not answer anymore. Maybe he said, you know more than me, you're asking. So I have to call a pastor, whether I like it or not. And uh, I invited my neighbors in White Plains, a rather class subdivision uh, where I stay. And during the preaching of the pastor, I put a Santo Nino beside him. <laughs> and he keeps looking at the Santo Nino. Oh, nagagandahan. So Santo Nino. Santo Nino. Afterwards, when he finished, he said, you know so many people sin without knowing. It's very bad to worship and pray to Santo Nino because it's a statue. Amen. We know that. We shouted. This is only a symbol. Pastor Kakasi. <laughs> so we argued and my, my uh, desire to love God was gone. I was so frustrated. He went home, the pastor, he did not take anything anymore. <laughs> so, I'm dying. Lord, I'm dying. Call another pastor, I said. <laughs> A pastor who will not mind my religion and my, my uh, Santo Nino. So, I thought of uh, using the disco house of my son, uh -huh, rather class, Rudolph's steak house, my son Rudolph, and uh, I said, I said to the waiters, invite the uh, neighbors there, about 50, I told the cook to cook for 50 tonight and uh, tell them I have a pastor who will talk. I, tell, I told the waiter and then he called. He said, nobody will come because <laughs> they don't want to hear a pastor. They're all Catholics. Oh, who will eat the 50 lunch I dinner? Okay. So, those who are passing by, because there are so many people are passing by. Those, about 7, 6.37, call them. Tell them it's free dinner. Free drinks. 
Han. Um, Sir Rudolph might get mad at us because uh, if uh, they are not well dressed, they are not accepted here. Never mind, only tonight. Tomorrow, don't do it anymore. <laughs> we will all, we will be both scolded. Okay. So they came, all males, and ninety percent tipsy. Three. <laughs> so, pastor came and he asked me, "Do you know God?" Pastor, <laughs> now he will ask me if I know God. Why am I provincial? I said, of course I know God. But we Christians, you know God, you are, you have a, uh, what do you call that? <laughs> Relationship. But I, I thought, uh, no God. So I said, of course, I studied in a Catholic school. Next question, when did you get born again? Born again? <laughs> Another question. Um, well, well, I, I, sometimes I remember, I saw one time, except a man be born again, he cannot enter heaven, Jesus said. John 3, 3. Okay? But then I did not believe that's only baloney. <laughs> and I said to him, why should I be born again? I have never died. <laughs> Still alive. <laughs> she wasn't able to answer the question because somebody called her to preach now. Amen? It's starting. So we went inside, air conditioned, and uh, while well, he was preaching, I heard a voice separate from your boyfriend. He is married. I'm dying and then I will separate. We love each other very much. All my dreams came true. I have now a big house in White Plains. I have a car every three years. I have everything, luxurious life. We go around the world and then, oh, no. No, Lord, no. <laughs> Possible. He repeated, separate, because he is married. And then the voice of the lady pastor came. The Lord is a spirit. He loves you very much. He is in front of you. He will forgive you whatever sins you have. Close your eyes. Raise your hands. Follow my prayer. And all of us closed our eyes and followed her. She said, Forgive me, Lord, for all my sins. Thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for me. I'm sorry. Jesus, come into my heart. You are my Lord and my Savior. When he said that, my life began. I was so happy for the first time in my life. I was so happy. I said, how come? I was so confused. I don't want to go to hell. But now, 
as if uh, I'm not going to hell. I love you, Jesus. I love you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Lord. Uh, I said to the pastor, what happened to me, pastor? I love Jesus already, and I'm so happy. This is the moment, the happiest moment of my life. Amen. Amen. And the pastor said, you got born again. Amen. <laughs> Amen. It is a miracle. Amen. Imagine, I didn't want to separate. But when I received Jesus, I'm so happy to separate. <laughs> I'm so happy. I never thought I would begin a new life. Wow. When I went home in the car, I said, all people whom I meet from now on, I will tell this story. All, I said, whether poor, rich, or multi-millionaires. And it really happened. When I reached home, there, my boyfriend, <laughs> who goes home every 12 midnight <laughs> to the wife. And I sometimes call him Cinderella. <laughs> Honey, do you really love me? What a question. Of course, we're together 13 years and a half, and you, you will ask me that for all these things you have know how much I love you. You're my life. You're my everything. Oh, nice. Well, you believe I'm dying. Isn't it? Yeah. And I want to go to heaven. I don't want to sin anymore. Can you? Because you love me. We will love each other but no more sin, no more sex. <laughs> That's right, amen. Yes. At first, he refused. He was angry. What happened to me? Maybe I met a boyfriend. Really? Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Yes. I met Jesus. Amen. 